there are further applications to this world of trigonometry that we have. Now, for example, we have the laws of sines and cosines. We have polar coordinates, parametric equations. What are these? When did they arise? Well, let's start with when they arose. See, in the 15th century, Jamshid al-Kashi, he was a Persian mathematician, and he came up with a way of looking at triangles that were not right triangles and determining their angles and lengths of their sides. And he called this the law of cosines. Polar coordinates? Well, Sir Isaac Newton invented calculus to justify the motion of the planets around the sun. And he found it easier to talk about a fixed point, a distance from the sun and a rotation from a fixed object. That's where they were born. But what is the law of cosines? What are polar coordinates? Well, let's start with the law of cosines. Here you have a plane in mid-flight, mind you. And what you could do is determine the height of the plane if you knew from these two radar stations exactly the angle of elevation from each radar station, 15 degrees to the one on the left, 35 degrees to the one on the right, up to the plane. All you need are those two angles and the distance between those two radar stations. Using the law of cosines helps us solve this problem. And polar coordinates, what are they? What are they useful for? First, look at the graph on the right. You're familiar with that. You have the point located three units to the right of the origin, three units up. Comfortable for us. Distances to the right and up. Polar coordinates, well, they're very different. What you see here is the same point, exact same point located. But how did we mark it? By going left and up? No. We marked it by going a certain distance from the pole, which is what we call the origin and polar coordinates, and rotation from the positive x-axis, which we call the polar axis. Very simple equations in polar coordinates can yield beautiful graphs. This graph is nothing more than r equals two cosine of four theta. Look how intricate it is. You wanna know what it's called? It's called a rose petal. And don't get me started on parametric equations. This very complicated graph, imagine how many different functions you'd need, and it'd all have to be written piecewise to be able to try and even create a function like this, because they'd have to pass a vertical line test. You'd have to increment it very carefully. Oh, nightmare. In parametric equations, each point, x comma y, is defined by an equation for x and an equation for y that are separate. This particular graph has a very simple equation. The x coordinate is the sine of seven pi t. The y coordinate is the cosine of five pi t. That's it. Further applications of trigonometric functions can tell us many things very simply.